Hello everyone and welcome to this video on everything you need to know about building or having a sim racing PC. So I built this absolute beast a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, and I've been tinkering with it ever since. And everything you see on this channel, sim racing, blogs, karting, everything goes through this PC here. So I know quite a bit about it and I'm going to let you know what you need to know if you want to get into sim racing, if you want to get into streaming, if you want to get into content creation, because ultimately most PCs have the same core um, components and some are more important than others for those use cases of sim racing, content creation, live streaming. So we're going to start off here with the basics. The first thing you need to think about actually when you get your PC, and it might not be what you, th what you think, but is your motherboard. The motherboard will determine whether you can have an AMD or an Intel CPU and it will also determine what generation of those CPUs you can have. So this motherboard here is a Z490 CPU, so I can use a 10th generation or 11th generation Intel CPU. Now there's a reason why I use Intel, which I'll go into later. Um, but if I wanted to get a 12th generation Intel CPU and those are looking pretty beastly, I wouldn't be able to use it on this motherboard, so I'd need to upgrade my motherboard. So that's a really critical kind of limiting piece of hardware. So make sure you look into your motherboard first. And it's not just a generation of CPU. It's also the kind of functionality you want to get. So this motherboard has three PCI, three PCIe slots. PCIe slots are these little lines here. Can you see? I'll do some B-roll. And into that you slot big heavy things like your graphics cards, capture cards, you can get NVMe kind of hubs that slot into PCIe slots as well. They're very high bandwidth interfaces to your motherboard. So it's a really high bandwidth interface. That means that you can run things very fast, which is what your graphics card needs, for example, is a load, load of bandwidth. So think about what you want in terms of PCIe slots. You want at least one. <laughs> Not sure there's many motherboards that don't have at least one PCIe slot, but I've gone for three here because I might want to slot in the capture card or something like that. Also think about the I.O. you want. So I'll just rotate this around the back and you can see here is all my I.O. And by that, I mean USB, um, audio inputs. I've got a Wi-Fi antenna and, and really critically for this PC, I've got two Thunderbolt ports. And that's really important because I use a Thunderbolt capture card, which means that I can take it places. I can also connect it to a laptop. So my whole architecture of my PC is literally built about the fact that I want to be mobile with my capturing. So I don't, I don't at the moment have a PCIe capture card, I have a Thunderbolt capture card, and therefore I need two Thunderbolt ports. That really limits you in terms of um, what motherboard you can get. This is a Z490 Vision D Gigabyte motherboard. There's, they also do a, um, a B550 um, Gigabyte motherboard that works for AMD CPUs, but I'm a bit concerned about AMD compatibility with, with Thunderbolt, which is an Intel proprietary technology. Loads of really complicated letters there. Basically, when you buy your motherboard, all your I.O. here, your interface, is baked into the motherboard. This is actually just a motherboard poking out. So you can't really change these. So make sure when you check your motherboard, check for PCIe. Also check for your I.O. Also check for which CPU you're going to use. Are you going to go red brand? AMD, you're going to go blue brand with Intel. The rest of the stuff on, this, on the motherboard isn't that super exciting, to be honest. This motherboard has some RGB built in you can see here also has a um a indicator in the top right here that lets me know if i've got any errors let me know which errors they are but most of the motherboards will come with the same style which is space for a cpu fan space for your system fans and um, sata um inputs as well for your hard drives now this um motherboard here another reason why i've gone for it is it has three nvme hard drive slots the nvme is the latest kind of um standard for hard drives very very fast you can get about 3000 4000 megabytes a second interface which is absolutely ludicrous and i've got three of them and i use those for recording my streams i use them for um and downloading my programs like my content editor and stuff like that i use it for transferring um files big files when i record my um uh, captures and stuff like that they're very very high bandwidth 100 megabytes a second so i record that here because they're huge files so NVMe, really, really important. But otherwise, the other stuff, yeah, system fans, SATA inputs, RGB stuff. Um, obviously, your CPU sits in the socket. That's not that complicated. But the motherboard is, is where you start. So we've got the motherboard now. Um, think about what you want to do. Do you want to do content creation? Do you want specific audio inputs? 
um, or do you want to be more gaming? Do you want to have just like a really high powered PCIe slot because they come with different amount of lanes, which determines the bandwidth. Um, but let's say you, you've chosen your motherboard now, where do you go now? So the next important thing is the CPU, which is hidden behind this chunky thing here. This is a CPU cooler. And here I've gone for an Intel 10600K, which was a decent CPU at the time that I built this PC over Christmas 2020. But actually I kind of regret not going up to an i7 because for iRacing in particular, that's very CPU bound on one core. So what I've done with this 10600K is I have overclocked it, so it does run at five gigahertz on all four, on all six cores, I believe, um, which is not too bad. But if I got an i7, I think I'd have eight cores and I could possibly run a little bit higher, maybe 5.1, 5.2 overclock. Don't worry about overclocking. We'll go into that in a later video if you're interested. Let me know in the comments, by the way, if you've got any questions about PC building or any anything that you might think is a stupid question, no stupid questions in the comments of this video. Ask me anything. Like all my videos, I try my best to get back to you on, on, all, on all the comments. Um, so if you've got any questions, do ask them. But anyway, so CPU's in there. When you install it, you'll need to add some CPU thermal paste, which is not that complicated to do. Close the latch. AMD and, C and Intel actually have different ways of securing the CPU. And then you'll need to add a CPU cooler. I've gone for an air cooler here, an air RGB cooler master cooler. Um, you can also go for an AIO, a, a water-cooled system. I thought that was a bit of an overkill for 1000K. But uh, you need to cool the CPU, and this, this plugs into a CPU socket on the motherboard, this fan, sorry, CPU fan socket. If that's not plugged in, I don't think the PC will even start. And I've done some serious stress testing on my CPU, and it will go up to insane heat. It will go to 100 degrees C before it starts throttling. So we've got our motherboard, we've got our CPU. What are we going to do next? Memory is very important. So memory, when I started kind of doing PC stuff, it says crazy how much is going but anyway in here i've got 32 gigabytes of course uh, rgb vengeance i believe memory i would recommend any pc you're building try and get 32 gigabytes that's going to future proof it definitely don't go for eight if you see a pre-built pc with eight gigabytes don't do it i racing won't even run on eight gigabytes these days definitely go 16 minimum but i say go for 32 just the way certain applications are these days like chrome video editors games they're using so much memory to kind of stream stuff um high quality assets and whatnot to go to 30 gigabytes. This is also RGB, but I've actually at the moment just, let me rotate it, you can see the memory I'm talking about. This is the memory here, these two slots. I've kept it at white. Something you can do is you can actually modify your RGB lighting to reflect how hot your system is, which I think is a very cool idea. I might do that in the future. So this motherboard has four slots for uh, memory, for RAM. I've used two of them. These are two 16 gigabyte slots. There's two more here, so I could use them if I wanted to. And these I've overclocked to 3600 megahertz. I think stock they're 2600, but you can overclock them. You have to activate something in the BIOS and then manually overclock it. It's a lot easier to overclock your RAM, by the way, than overclocking your CPU. Overclocking your CPU, if anyone's watching this and you're not like a, a computer expert, definitely before you start overclocking your CPU, jump in our Discord where we have a tech talk channel. There's a link in the description below and ask us any questions you've got because you can really mess things up by overclocking your TPU. Um, you have to mess around with voltage and stuff like that. So we've got our RAM now, not too complicated. RAM isn't too expensive these days. We've got 32 gigabytes here. What are we gonna do next? Let's do our storage. So I've got here, you can see here, this silver one there, that is an NVMe slot and I've got three of them and all of them are filled with, with hard drives. Now you've got to be careful here because a lot of motherboards will share bandwidth between certain components. So my um, graphics card, which we'll get onto, sits in a 16 lane PCI slot and that's not shared with anything. But if I was to put PCI cards in here, they would be shared with the NVMe and I don't want that to happen. I want to have max speed on my graphics card and max speed on my NVMe. In terms of space, I've got two one gigabyte drives here and I've got also a 256 I actually installed today, which is partly why I've got the, the PC open because normally there's a glass panel here. Also be very careful when you're poking around your PC that you haven't got static charge built up. So if you just touch the case normally, if that's plugged into the PSU, that'll be grounded and you won't build up any static charge. That can damage your components. Not something I've done yet, but something I'm concerned about. So yeah, you can get NVMe in there. I'd recommend that. They're quite cheap these days. To get a gigabyte NVMe drive, you can get one for about £60. In fact, on a good day, you can get one for close to £50. 
for one gigabyte NVMe drive, and that's the fastest hard drive you can get. And in fact, if you're building a PC on a bit of a budget, I say get one one gigabyte, sorry, one terabyte, sorry, one one terabyte NVMe drive for about sixty pounds. That would be great. I've got two of them, so I separate the installation of my programs from my videos and my content creation and my recording of videos and editing videos. And I've also got a third one here that I'm just going to use as a, as a kind of cache. Now, if you don't want to use NVMe, you can still go old school. So you can still use a SATA drive or even a old, old school, or you can use SATA SSD or a SATA hard drive. Those sit around the back of this case, they're not that exciting. I've got one SATA SSD T56 just there as a kind of placeholder because I can't really justify um, kind of getting more NVMe drives at the moment. So I might pick up a cheap SATA drive as kind of a backup just to store stuff. You can also just plug in hard drives through the USB slots around the back or around the front. If you've got USB-C, you get, you get great speeds on that as well. Samsung makes some really great um, portable SS3 drives. You can get a terabyte, again, I think for under £100, which is not too bad. Prices in other, other territories may vary. Um, if you do, by the way, the great thing about NVMe here is the installation process is so easy. And I've done this on PC, I've done this on laptops. All you do is you unscrew the cover, you click in your NVMe drive. It's a little bit kind of feels sketchy the first time you do it, but you get used to it. Click in your NVMe drive, slot it in, screw in the NVMe drive, and that's it. It's got its connection for data, it's got a connection for power, absolutely great. If you want to connect to an old school SATA drive, you have to plug into the motherboard here your SATA interface, which, which transfers the data, and then you need to go into your PSU, which we'll get onto. You need to plug in a, a PSU um, power input into your SATA drive. It's a lot more fiddly, which is actually why I've got a placeholder. So I've wired it all up. And then what I'll do is one day I'll, I'll get a bigger SATA kind of backup SSD just for lower speed um, storage. But by the way, SATA speeds are still very, very high. It's, it's probably unlikely that you'll hit the theoretical maximum of any of these drives anyway. So we're going to PSU later, but let's talk about the big boy here, which is the GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card from NVIDIA. I used, when I built this PC last year, I had a Vega 56 from AMD. That was great, did a great job. It's a really old graphics card. Sorry, my camera overheated there. So I got rudely interrupted as I was talking about my graphics card, <laughs> which is a 3080 from NVIDIA. So when I started the AMD, the AMD um, Vega 56, which even though it was many years old, I was able to sell it for 400 pounds. So if you've got an old graphics card, with all the crypto stuff and demand at the moment, you might be able to sell it. So basically, I, I was very, very, very lucky. I can't tell you how lucky I was to get this. I bought this direct from NVIDIA. I just happened to be on the website for the millisecond that it was available in the summer. And I got one. And it basically didn't cost me anything because of what I sold my, um, my old graphics card for. But unfortunately, these are in incredible demand. So do sign up for all the alerts and whatnot. Also in our Discord, if you've got any um, good spots, let us know. There's a lot of people wanting to get these. But this 3080 is absolutely beastly. I think it takes actually less power than my AMD Vega 56. It's very, very quiet. It chomps through everything. I've done eye racing at 240 frames a second. It's an absolute beast. Quite difficult to get onto the motherboard because everything is quite congested here. My CPU fan is quite big. But this is the PS de resistance of this case and when I built my PC at Christmas last year I built it kind of in the knowledge that I'd be hunting for an Nvidia GPU one of the 30 series and I managed to get one about seven eight nine months later which is absolutely insane right the other bit we're going to look at here is cooling and that's actually what I've updated today I used to have some issues with my CPU overheating and that's probably due to me um, overclocking it as well so what I've done today is I've installed two more fans. So I've got, so when you buy your case, by the way, you'll have fans that come with the case. Usually I've got one fan here that came with the case, one fan here that came with the case. I've installed one here and one here. And also, sorry, there was one at the top here that came with the case. So it came with three fans. I think that's quite generous. A lot of cases come with two. Um, and I've installed two more. I want to install three more. Now, even though I'm a kind of, I know what I'm doing around PCs and I, you know, I have this YouTube channel and we, you know, we're quite technically, Adept, I would say, even I make mistakes. So I, what I wanted to do was to add this uh, manual fan controller, um, install it in here, and then just be able to, when I'm doing eye racing, just whack up all the fans manually, and um, rather than leaving it to kind of um, uh, fan curves in the, in the BIOS, which aren't always 100% reliable. Um, unfortunately, this is 
made to fit in a old school kind of five inch bay for like a DVD case or a CD case. And my case being so modern doesn't have one of those and it won't fit around the back either. So I'm kind of thinking, what do I do with this? I could just kind of slot it here, but then I need to take the glass panel off. So probably I need to return that or sell it or something. Um, and also I was hoping to slot in three fans at the front, but I was only able to do that because it only fits 320 million, 120 millimeter fans and I've got 140 millimeter fans. So I've got a spare fan as well, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But anyway, be careful about the cooling and whatnot because ultimately performance of your PC and ultimately your gameplay and stream and whatnot is an equation and that equation is kind of like energy, involves like energy, heat, performance. So like heat is a limiting factor. If your heat gets too high, your components will start to throttle, especially your CPU. And um, it's incredible really when you think about it, it's kind of like the, the level of calculations these components can can go through um, and therefore it's no surprise that, that they heat up but it, incredibly heat is a limiting factor so if you live in a really cold place great news and I specifically have moved this PC into an area where it's like has a bit of a draft to keep it cool and I've noticed that it's actually significantly better than when I had it at my old setup and um, if you watch my old videos and streams where I had to point a fat another external fan because it, it was getting so hot but there we go so we've talked about motherboard we've talked about CPU, CPU fan, memory, fans, GPU. The other component, is, there's only really one other component I can think of, which is your PSU, which is a thing that delivers all the power to your system. Now you'll see these rated like gold, silver, bronze, and you'll see them rated for watches like 500, 750, 1000. I think I've gone for a 750 gold, and that's pretty good. If you want to utterly feature-proof it, go for a 1000 watt gold. But this 750 watt doesn't really have any issues. The only issue I have with this computer is that when I turn it on, it will almost like, you know, like sometimes an old car, when you turn the key, it, will, it won't start. And if you do it again, do it again. My PC does the same thing. It won't start initially. And it has to go like two or three times and then it gets going and then it's fine. I think that might be something to do with my undervolting or my overclocking or something like that. But yeah, this this is the PC. So if I if I go through the components I've got again, if you're looking to buy something like this, I've got a Gigabyte Vision D Z490 Z490 motherboard. I've got an Intel 10600K CPU overclocked to 5 gigahertz on every core. I've got Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM 32 gigabytes overclocked to 3600 megahertz. I've got a Nvidia GeForce 3080 graphics card. I've got a C Sonic 750 Gold PSU. I've got now five. Be Quiet, Silent Wings, 140mm fans. The case is a Be Quiet 500DX RGB case. It comes with RGB lighting at the, at the top and at the front as well. I've got three NVMe hard drives. One is an Aorus Gigabyte PCIe 4.0 1TB hard drive. I can't take the benefit of the 4.0 at the moment, but it's still very fast. One is a Samsung 980 one terabyte SSD, 980 Evo maybe. And one is a, uh, what are they called? WD Digital Standard 256 blue um, gigabyte hard drive. And around the back, I've got a PNY 256 SATA hard drive. And I think that's pretty much it. I do know, I, I all this I, all this stuff I built with my own money and it's it was a lot of money for me. So I know every component kind of inside out pretty much. So again, if you've got any questions, ask me in the comments. Um, this is the bit behind the channel that you don't really see. It's like on TV shows when they thank all of their staff, like the presenter thanks staff. I, I don't have any staff. <laughs> I just have, it's just me who does everything on this channel. And this is, this is the staff, the CPU, the GPU, the memory, etc. So um, yeah, I really like this machine. I didn't have a PC for a long time, but th there's nothing like having your own desktop PC. It sort of becomes your hub. It's very satisfying when it's on and when it's humming away and when it's ch you know churning through stuff. So nothing like having a PC. Um, and I think with this one, what it shows you is that you can upgrade as well. You can kind of buy components to get you started and you can upgrade them over time. So if I wanted to upgrade the memory, I could do that. 
I've just slotted in some more fans there. I've just added some new hard drives. Um, I've upgraded the GPU. The only thing I haven't actually upgraded in this thing really is the motherboard. If you, if you upgrade the motherboard, you're kind of building a new PC, the CPU and the memory. Everything else really, I've, I've tinkered away and upgraded. Even, even the hard drives I've upgraded over time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash this down like you would do with a car. And I'm going to put it back in its place. I'm going to do some stress testing to make sure the thermals are good. I'm going to update the fan curves. It's amazing now. I can I can feel like, you know, the airflow is, is significantly better. By the way, there are two hot air rises. And we're trying to, you know, with that equation I talked about, we're trying to eradicate heat or lower temperatures. So you want to make sure that you have good kind of updraft here. Don't just put a load of stuff on top of your desktop PC, even though it's tempting to do so. Try and keep this as a, as a thoroughfare for your, for your air. But there we go. Do make sure to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff if you enjoyed this. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you guys and girls make this channel really, so it's incredible to see where, where we come from, where we're going. If you've got any questions, best to ask in the comments or in our Discord. It's a very friendly bunch of people in Discord as well, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, yes, this is the B. So you've got a good name for it as well. Let me know when we can name it. And um, yeah, that's it really. I can't wait to just get back on the PC and start creating. So yeah, I like this thing. It's nice. See you. See you, bye. That was a really bad ending. <laughs>